I'm Ben Foden, and you're watching Rugby Wrap-Up. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, Major League Rugby and USA Rugby star Anko Gemeshes. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Irish Rugby Tours, the Rugby Tours people. A balanced palate, nutrition for peak performance. AFIA Sports Training Group and Big and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City and we have a great show today. We have a big budding star from Major League Rugby, none other than Mr. Hanko Gamashes from the Glendale Raptors. Hanko, welcome. Did I get the name right? Close enough, close enough. Got the name, the last name. We'll, we'll work on that a little bit. All right, give me a run-through on that last name just once. Harmaces. Harmaces. There you go. That's better. That's better? A better start. Yes, sir. Harmaces. Okay, so for the folks that have been living uh, under a rock or in a cave that don't know you, you are an up-and-coming wrecking ball of a flanker for not only the Eagles for Team USA, but also now in the MLR. And in your, with your second team in two seasons in the MLR, you went from the Austin Elite, and they're still kicking their cowboy boots because you're not with them, and you're with the Glendale Raptors now. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it was fun being with Austin, the Austin Elite, but um, coming back to uh, the Glendale Raptors uh, really opened my eyes, and uh, being here, uh, just it's, I love being here with all the boys and the past friends I had here. All right, so what does the number 489 mean to you? That's my eagle number. Ah, you've done your homework. Very good <laughs> press offer. How many 15s caps do you have? Currently 11. Ding, ding, ding. He is correct. Circle gets the square. Good. All right, you're off to a great start. Also, a little bit about you. You're originally from South Africa, but have been in Nebraska, I believe Omaha. Is that accurate? I moved to America in 2011, 2012. So when I was 15 years old, 14. You played rugby in um, Ohio, oh, Omaha High School, is that right? I played for Omaha Westside, my, my high school. So what was it like for those kids having to deal with you as a seasoned rugby player coming in and tearing up their pitches in, in Nebraska? I mean, it, it, was, it was fun playing with them, um, coming here. Uh, the only reason I told my dad, I was like, I'll move here. If, like, you can find me a place that has rugby. And he found uh, um, uh, Westside High School for me. And coming here, playing with those the, the kids I played with, it was kind of a lot easier. But uh, it opened my eyes to a lot on how the sport in America could grow. And seeing what I came to when I first moved to America to what it is now is unbelievable. The 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 how much people have learned about rugby has has increased a lot. So, I'm just looking at you, and I'm thinking: a, you could lie and say that you're Peyton Manning's kid and get probably some free stuff in Denver, and b, <laughs> looking the way you do and Nebraska, that's a perfect fit because. If they were looking for somebody and they put an ad in the paper, we need people that look like they're from Nebraska. You fit that job description totally. Uh, yeah, Nebraska. I'll definitely call that Nebraska home for the rest of my life. Uh, I, I've been to a lot of states, but Nebraska will always be home. I love Nebraska. That's cool. That's cool. But any anybody say anything about Peyton Manning before? No, nobody has said anything about Peyton Manning before. No. Nope. Drop his name. Say, I'm his son, man. Look at me. <laughs> I'll try that next. I'll see if it works. I just say I've studied abroad a little bit. I got a little bit of a dialect going on. <laughs> All, right. All right. So big move from the Austin Elite in all seriousness. You're down there from the get-go. They struggled a little bit. You, you guys were in some matches that maybe some people thought you wouldn't be in, like me. You know, you guys scrapped and you, it was a tough season. But now you make the move to Glendale. Great organization, Davey Williams, great coach, soup to nuts. You've got everything there that you could want as a rugby player. What was the transition like for you? Was it a little bit melancholy? Was it a little bit bittersweet moving over? Uh, honestly, it was a little bittersweet. Um, uh, living in Austin, Texas, it was awesome. Being with the team and stuff was awesome. Players and everything was amazing there. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we just couldn't uh, get to a resolution for my, the next contract that, that I wanted. And coming to Glendale, it, I knew it would be a better su suit for me with the World Cup coming up because of Davey. Uh, when I played in the, the, the pro rugby, he, he was one of my coaches. And 
he helped me so much with my conditioning, my fitness, my ball play skills and everything. So coming back here, I knew that I would be in a better situation than I would have was in Austin because of Coach Davey, how much he helps me with my conditioning and how much I can learn from the other guys that's already here. Hanko, hold that thought. Uh, we have to take a quick break. But before we do, I just wanted to tip the cap, that cap, to Shane at the helm because they showed us a great time when we were over there. And I would strongly urge anyone that's ever going to Ireland to go to Westport, look up Shane at the helm, specifically Brittany and Joe McGreal, who are now living in Westport as well. But don't go away. We'll be right back with Hanko Harmises of the Raptors after this. I've been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we are back. Matt McCarthy and Hanko Harmeses. All right, so I was given a bit of information about you from some of your teammates on the Eagles um, and something along the lines with John Mitchell and the nickname The Prodigy. Do you want to <laughs> explain that, please? Uh, so, uh, that's funny. Uh, so, um, me being from South Africa, I didn't know there's Prodigy and Prodigy, and I still don't know what the meaning from which one is what. But uh, so Mitchell messaged me and just said, uh, I want you to come in camp. Uh, You'll, you'll be like, uh, what's a prodigy or protege, whichever Pro, one. Protege is the, is the more, Steve Lewis would say protege, and most of us Americans would say protege. Yeah, the way where you would come in and come and learn, but you're not going to play or anything because, I, yeah, I was 19 or 18 when I came into camp first, and I would just come learn from the guys. And so when I got into camp, I was like, yeah, I'm not playing and everything. And then uh, Mitchell told me I was just going to be like the prodigy, prodigy or prodigy. Protege. <laughs> yeah. And I, th um, I thought it means like, yeah, I'm just here to learn from other people and learn from the flankers and my position and everything. And that's why I told the, one, the, some, one of the guys who asked me. And then they're like, and then I didn't know it meant yeah. like, yeah. you think like higher. And then and that's just how it's stuck. And it's just, yeah. So it was an oopsie. Yeah, an oopsie. And it's, it's kind of sounds like you're talking about yourself when you're not. But, you know, yeah. th there have been other oopsies of that degree in rugby. I mean, the All Blacks, if you face uh, urban legend or actually rural, rural legend, there there was supposed to be a typo where the, the writer was writing, they played like All Backs, and it stuck to be All Blacks. Yeah. I know we're going to get a thousand uh, people yelling, no, that's not true, and people that yell that it's true, well, we're going to go with it true. But <laughs> either way, my friend, you have gone toward the prodigy part because... You are part of a winning culture down there. You're not necessarily loose to, used to losing with the Eagles. It's an amazing run you guys are on. Yeah. What's that been like for you? Being with the Eagles, and when I first came in, um, it just, when John Mitchell was there, he was a great coach and everything, and he brought us together as a team. And when Gary came in, he just kept us all together. He kept players together. And when we come back, we play with each other, we go home, we come back, we all play with each other. So that just stuck and we know how each other play. And the playing with each one of these guys makes everything fall in place. Everybody knows their roles. So it, it, everything just goes smooth. The staff behind the scenes, they do everything perfect for us. So that just makes us play so much better. And our fans have become tremendously in support of us. Yeah, you guys are ranked number 12. You beat Samoa, Scotland. I was down in Houston to watch you score that great try in the corner. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you played in Ireland. You 24-14 at a halftime in front of a packed Aviva Stadium. I was there as well, screaming uh, as the Yank in the, in the press box. Nobody told the Americans they were not supposed to be in this match. There's 37-point underdogs, and we're in it, baby. Go Eagles. But what's been the most exciting moment for you? Uh, I would have to be 
the ARC uh, last year. Coming into the ARC, I was I was I didn't have any caps really. Uh, so young and stuff. And then when I I got my first starting cap when Gary took over against uh, in the in the ARC. So that just and that whole ARC, I got into the groove and everything. And now I'm at eleven caps and the experience of everything with the guys and stuff. That that's the best part for me so far. Okay, so other than scoring a try, what is your most enjoyable moment on a rugby pitch? It's the team. That's honestly like the most enjoyable thing on a rugby pitch other than scoring a try is seeing how smooth in the feel of on the field when you run the pattern perfectly and it pays off. That's probably the best thing in the celebration after someone else scores the try. That's a great answer, my friend. Changing gears. What was the biggest adjustment for you off the pitch? And then on the pitch with the level of play that you were obviously subjected to when you got to Nebraska. Um, it, the difference was just because South Africa at the time I moved was so much more advanced in rugby than the USA. So coming here, I didn't want to lose my skill and dropping down. But what also helped me was when I got selected to the USA uh, camps and stuff like that. And that just kept my skills up when I came. And then... I met Dave Sinnott, uh, one of my coaches back home in Omaha, and he coaches the Omaha Goats. He was with Glendale before, but before then, when I was 14, he, he helped me all day. When he had time, he would come and help me with my skills, tackling drills, poaching drills, and he came with me to Gloucester for a week with the trial there. And so um, I would have to say not dropping down my skills to what the players here were used to back then, it's just keeping my skills up so I can progress and not go down the gloucester mm -hmm. academy right talk about that for a second uh being at gloucester was amazing uh played with sam underhill um and i learned a lot from him with poaching and stuff me and him we he played seven i played six at six and uh we were a duo together but other than that being at gloucester the environment everything was amazing uh the the first team would always be willing to help if you need questions just go sit down you can talk to them and the experience was unbelievable. The training, the food, everything was just amazing being there. Is your speed in the open field and your ability to carry the ball still surprising opponents? Um, I would hope so, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. That, that's for them to decide, but uh, I would hope so. All right, and final question for you because I know you got to go. You are familiar with the surroundings of Glendale because you were with the Denver Stampede that were the champions. Yes, sir. Because we have the hat on the set, and your fellow countryman, Pedri, uh, was kind enough to give me his hat in the airport when you guys were trying to get out of Ohio when we had that epic party with the cup and everything else in the airport for all the delays. You remember that? I do remember that. that was, well, that was rough next day. Can that was, say that. Yeah, that was a good time. Good time. And only because of the jet lag. That's the only reason you were rough the next yeah, day. That, that was, yeah, true. And the bodies were a little sore after the game, so that's why. Exactly. We'll wait till after your playing career to enjoy a Wolfpack lager and reflect back on your career. Sounds like a plan to me. All right, my friend. I will see you in Seattle, by the way. I'm coming out, uh, so I'll see you out there playing against the Seawolves, correct? Yes, sir. That'll be awesome. All right, brother. And on that note, Mr. Hanko Harmaces of the Glendale Raptors. Thank you, sir, for coming in. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And just like that, we're out of time. Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up, covering Major League Rugby here in New York City at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan, signing off. <laughs>